We talked about introducing stressors off of the bite, critical. We show the dog a stressor and then we let the dog bite and the stress stops. At some point though, of course, we're going to want to add stressors while the dog's in the act of biting. So I want to use the stick or personal pressure or some environmental stressor while the dog is actually biting. This is where the role of the decoy becomes critical. When the, de when the dog is biting a certain part of my body, I need to make sure that as I add stressors that I put energy into the part of my body that the dog is biting. So if the dog were biting my arm and I were going to lift the stick over their head, I would immediately put energy into my arm so that it feels like the object in the dog's mouth is trying to get away from them. At the same time, I'm adding that stress. If I let all energy go out of the part of my body that the dog is biting, as I add stressors, it feels like there's nothing happening here. There's no life, there's no activity, and the dog starts to focus more on the stressor. And you can get dogs that'll learn to transfer bites. They'll let go to go for the stick, or they'll feel there's nothing happening here, and they'll try to bite you somewhere else. Which brings us to the fact that the decoy's job is the job of an actor. When you're working in training young dogs to do bite work, our job is to act or react to the dog. The dog has to think that their behavior is having an effect on me. And we manifest this in various ways. One of the ways is the dog's biting me and he bites in, I respond to that biting in. I twitch, I jerk, I, oh, I exaggerate some dramatic reaction. Well, the same thing happens when I add stressors. So I add a stressor and then I immediately put energy into my uh, body part where the dog's biting. And if the dog bites down harder, then I let him know that that's having an effect on me, either by responding, twitching my body, vocalizing, or dropping away the stressor. So I add a stressor, I put energy in the part of my body the dog's biting, the dog fights back, and by fighting back, it makes the stressor stop. And we, we call this countering frequently, where we teach the dog to counter stressors or counter threat. I lift the stick over the dog, the dog fights back, I remove the stick. I lift the stick over the dog, but the important part here is that I make sure that I keep energy in the part of my body the dog is biting when I add stressors, critical. As a decoy, we're constantly responding to what the dog's doing. So one of the ways we respond is by reacting when the dog bites me. If the dog bites me, I let him know that his bite had an effect on me. If he fights harder, I let him know it's having an effect on me. If he barks at me, I let him know. So one of the important things we need to teach our young dogs as well is to confront us with their voice as well as their mouth. So they have to bite me, or but they also have to be able to control me through barking. And so what we do is we get the dog to bark at me, and then when the dog barks, I respond. I show him that he's having an effect on me, and he learns that he can move me around and confront me with his voice as well. And by doing this, our dog now has multiple ways of making an impression on me. And one of the fastest ways to actually kill a behavior is by being non-responsive to it. We use it all the time in obedience. We ignore the dog jumping on us. We do these other things, and if the dog figures out that the dog is begging at the table, we ignore it, right? By ignoring behavior, it tends to go away. So in protection work, this is especially critical. Your dog is manifesting some kind of energy, whether it's barking or biting me or trying to pursue me. If I act like it's not affecting me in any way, that behavior can go away. So our role as a decoy is very important.